Hello, my name is Francis and I am the coordinator for EcoSchools England. And I'm very happy to be delivering this session for the Schools Climate Education South Yorkshire Conference. The EcoSchools programme is now over 28 years old. It began in 1994 following the UN Conference on Environment and Development in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. The conference highlighted the importance of youth-led environmental action. And so, EcoSchools was born. We have been empowering young people to make a positive difference ever since. In England, the EcoSchools programme is operated by Keep Britain Tidy. You might recognise the Keep Britain Tidy logo on the screen. Perhaps you have even participated in our annual Great British Spring Clean or Great Big School Clean litter picking events. But Eco Schools isn't only in England. There are Eco Schools in Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, Ireland, America, Canada, Brazil, Ghana, Singapore. In fact, we have Eco Schools in more than 70 countries around the world. This means that there are nearly 20 million young people like yourselves who are all involved in actively protecting our planet. And these young people, like yourselves, are all making a huge difference. In England alone, this school year, one million young people attend a school who are engaging with the Eco Schools programme. 1.4 thousand trees have been planted by these young people. Nearly 7,000 of them have been on a litter pick. And over 100 second-hand clothes sales have been organised. And we're only halfway through the year. I've told you how Eco Schools began. And I've also shared a small selection of the programme's impacts in England in the last half of the academic year. But you may be wondering, well, I know the history of Eco Schools, but what exactly is Eco Schools? Essentially, the Eco Schools program is a seven step framework which has been specifically designed to put young people in control of environmental actions in their school and local community. We choose to place young people in control because we believe young people like you have the passion and ability to make a difference now. And by engaging with nature and learning the skills to make a difference now, we believe you will then continue to make a difference throughout your lifetimes, including when you grow up to become leaders, decision makers and educators yourselves. Our framework provides guidance and a timeline, scaffolding the environmental actions in a school. When a school has worked through the seven step framework, they can then apply for an internationally recognised Eco Schools Green Flag accreditation, meaning the programme provides guidance, a timeline and a reward. We never tell young people what environmental actions to take in their school or local community. This means that young people are free to work on the projects that they are most passionate about. It also means every school can have Eco Schools Green Flag success, no matter where they are located or what circumstances they find themselves in. Our seven steps are as followed. If you begin at the top, you can follow the diagram round. Step one is Eco Committee. This involves forming a group of students and staff members to lead the Eco Schools programme in their school. They complete the Eco Schools Environmental Review, which is step two. The Environmental Review has over 100 questions for secondary school students and it is designed to review the school environment whilst also allowing the Eco Committee to consider potential future environmental actions and projects that they might like to undertake. 
Next, the Eco Committee create an action plan. This is when they decide on the three environmental projects or actions that they will work on throughout the academic year. Step four is curriculum links, and this step is more aimed at teaching staff. Throughout the Eco Schools process, teaching staff should consider how to include environmental contexts in students' learning in a variety of subjects, not just confined to geography or science. To ensure Eco Schools work has the maximum possible impact, step five is informing and involving, which makes it necessary for the Eco Committee to inform their school community about their Eco Schools work and to involve as many people as possible. Monitoring and evaluation is step six. This involves checking the, that the projects in the action plan are successful and if they are not as impactful as desired, adapting and making any necessary changes to have a more positive outcome. Finally, step seven is the eco code. When the eco committee agree on an environmental statement that reflects their eco school's ethos. As you will all know, the last few years have been very challenging and unusual. We have been forced apart from our families, friends, colleagues and schoolmates for prolonged periods of time. We have had to work from home and even when we were allowed to work in our usual working environment, it has often been difficult to meet up as large groups to collaborate on the environmental projects that are a requirement of the Eco Schools programme. At first, this worried the Eco Schools team. We thought, how can the Eco Schools programme work if students can't get together in person to plan and deliver the free environmental projects? that are required to achieve an Eco Schools green flag. But like our key workers, young people like yourselves adapted and you cracked on with everything. Eco committees started meeting over Zoom or Teams and they thought of innovative environmental projects that could be completed even when people weren't necessarily allowed to be together. In fact, young people adapted so well that last year, despite all the lockdowns and working in bubbles, the Eco Schools programme in England had its best ever year, with more than 750 schools achieving Eco Schools green flag status. And the way students adapted the programme taught a valuable lesson to the Eco Schools team. They taught us that Eco Schools work doesn't have to be confined to school hours and school buildings. In fact, they taught us that if we want to make as big a difference as possible, we need to think more about how we can facilitate the spread of Eco Schools work beyond school boundaries and into pupils and students' homes. In the previous slide, I talked about the need to spread Eco Schools work beyond the school boundaries and into student homes. The sheet you can now see on the screen is an example of one of the approaches we have used to do this. This year, we partnered with an ethical children's clothing brand to create our No Escapade Too Big or Small Bingo. This bingo sheet was designed to be completed by younger children with their families during school holidays. The idea is simple. Like in bingo, young people cross off all the challenges they complete during the holidays, hoping to complete every challenge. The sheet contains 16 challenges. 
The challenges are mainly designed to make a positive difference. But some of the challenges simply encourage young people to engage with nature. Because we feel if young people have a connection with the natural world, they are more likely to want to actively protect it. There is an also an educational element to some challenges. Again, if children are more aware of the threats facing our planet, they are more likely to do something about them. The first task is very simple. All you need is a piece of paper and something to write with. Your first task is to think of a title for your holiday homework bingo activity. The title we went with is No Escapade Too Big or Small. I think this is a great title, but it is also aimed at younger children. So you will need to think of something more appropriate for secondary school students. You have five minutes to think of a title. You can do this as a group or you can do it on your own. It's entirely up to you and your class teacher. Your next task is to think of 16 different activities for students to complete as part of their bingo holiday homework. You will need to consider accessibility. The tasks should be accessible to all. There would be little point having a task such as change the family car to an electric car because for the majority of families, this is very, very difficult to achieve, meaning they may not want to engage with the rest of your activities as they are set up for failure. Simplicity. Like accessibility, activities should be simple enough to encourage engagement. If you are asking too much of your schoolmates and their families, they may find your homework unachievable and then they might not want to engage with it. Tasks can be as simple as walk to a destination you would usually drive to. For example, your local shops or grandparents' houses. Tasks definitely do not have to be complicated to have a large impact. Locality. At eco schools, we work nationally, so we can never really include any local challenges. But as you all inevitably live in a similar area, this is not the case for you. Consider including local challenges like Visit Norfolk Heritage Park. I admit I had to Google Parks in Sheffield to use this as an example. Education. As well as encouraging schoolmates to actively make a difference, you should include at least one task aimed at educating your schoolmates about the issues our planet currently faces. For example, one task could be Watch an episode of The Green Planet on iPlayer. Engagement. Like our tasks, you should also include tasks encouraging your schoolmates to engage with nature. The Visit Norfolk Heritage Park task I referenced previously is a good example of this. Additional information. Do you need to provide any additional information alongside any of your tasks. For example, one of our tasks is to recycle five items. In this case, it would be useful to include good recycling practice instructions too. You have 20 minutes to decide your 16 tasks. And again, you can work as a group on this task or you can do it alone. Your final task is to agree upon a title for your eco school's holiday homework. It is also time to agree on the final 16 activities 
you are going to set as a school for this homework challenge. When you have done this, I want you to turn your agreed upon ideas into a resource that can be sent home with your schoolmates. Make your title eye-catching. Draw a grid and write down each of your activities in the grid with an accompanying simple ergonomic graphic for each. When you have completed this task, it is then time to choose your class's favourite designs. These are the ones that can be sent home with the rest of your schoolmates for their eco schools environmental holiday homework. You have all created a fantastic resource today that will help make a difference and protect our planet. Thank you. I hope you had fun.